Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Vinny Fisher. Vinny, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Hi, Vinny. We want you to go ahead and get us started and sort of give us just a little bit of background about yourself and tell our listeners where your focus is right now as an entrepreneur. Awesome. I am a happily married most of the time guy of uh, almost 25 years. Deb and I have produced four awesome children. And so I'm in the throes of being a dad and husband to uh, almost four teenagers. So that seems to be life (laughs) on the professional side. I'm a lawyer by training. I'm probably definitionally a serial entrepreneur. I've had uh, a few eight-figure businesses, one we sold, one we broke, one we're in the middle of. And so I'm currently growing our our current child, which is the uh, fully accountable. I'm the CEO and founder of an outsourced accounting firm that focuses its entire growth on e-commerce and digital companies. And so we live in the digital world. And we provide all of that back office accounting stuff to high transaction businesses that live in the digital space. Well, Vinny, I know that you have quite the depth of knowledge when it comes to being an entrepreneur and what it means. And I know you've faced many tough decisions, which is why I'm really excited about this interview today. So I want you to start us off by talking about, I don't want to say your worst tough decision, but a tough decision I like to call the sore thumb tough decision that really sticks out in your mind every time you think about decisions gone wrong. But I know going through it, you probably learned lots of lessons. We want to dive into those lessons as well. So can you share that tough decision with us? Yeah, you know, it's actually a, a theme decision that actually happened multiple times in, in my business life. And I think it's, an, sadly, the epidemic of the entrepreneur, the, the person who's a trailblazer. So the, the, here's how it goes. I would typically start our businesses and then hand off the business to another operator Now, most of the time, that may have been too fast or too quickly. And I did that in one case. We had a hosting company that I handed the reins off to, and it was the wrong fit. Well, there were so many problems in the business that instead of jumping back in and fixing those, I went on and did something else. And so one of the the painful lessons I learned is that it's way harder to start something new than it is to go fix something that's currently broken. But the the personality I've been given, I'm a much better starter than I am fixer. And so I've had to kind of work through that in life. But in that particular instance, you know, we broke a very healthy web hosting company because I made a really, what I would say, poor decision in believing that I built the company well enough for someone else to run it. And I stepped away from it, trying to not be trapped in operations And uh, I broke an eight-figure business in the process. Vinny, that's something that we have seen played out, you know, with with other entrepreneurs as well. And so I'm wondering, what have you learned through those experiences? And what do you look for? What what are some key things that you look for and evaluate when you're trying to decide, is this business ready to be turned over? There's probably a thing I would encourage everybody that for me is, you know, I'm always working on my development. And so as a result of that, right, if I'm the leader, everything I've always been in, I'm always naturally involved in some form of the leadership. And so I've learned that I'm not walking away from leadership if I'm growing a business. I may be developing an executive team that's dealing with operational pieces of the company, but I was overcorrecting by moving away from the business. And so one of the things I've learned is we all have mountains to climb. It's either the current mountain you're on or a different mountain. And one of the mistakes I make is I would think about a different mountain to climb in the middle of climbing the mountain I'm currently on. And so now what I look for is things that don't fit well within my personality. And I day-to-day operations, after something's been established, the maintenance operational part of a business, which is equally critical as the start in idea formation, and maybe even more critical in some cases, I see that as something different than somebody who operates that from there. And what that means is I see that as 
like high friction. I don't want to do it. And so I want to run away from that maintenance work. But, but my COO, Rachel, loves that kind of work. And so now what I look for is the difference between starting new initiatives in the company versus the ongoing process and structure that's needed. So in that case, if I see structure and process, then I help lead Rachel or our executive team through growth and executive leadership. If it's stuff that's new and starting, then I'm the best one on the team to do that. That's an interesting way to look at it because, you know, Danae was just looking at me as you were saying that and saying that's basically just like you. <laughs> and uh, that's the difference between being that, that visionary type person in the business versus doing that person who's actually putting all the things into place from the nuts and the bolts side of things. It's, it's having somebody from the top that can really look at things from a procedural standpoint, a process standpoint, and how to get that person, get, get that business to the next level. And so the day and the mistake I made there is kind of what Danae was probably staring at you about was... This, the mistake I made is I allow our executive team to go do it. And the reality is it's my idea or I'm the one that has kind of the guessing. I can see a home through all of its mistakes, the next version of it, or I can see land built up into something like I've been given that privilege to see it when it's done before it's even started. And so the mistake I would make is when I identify it as something that's processed, I would stop leading them and then they would feel like this need to do it and guess and the product came out wrong. So now I'm working through, it's a daily kind of thing where I make sure that I'm not removed from leading the leadership. What shift to a different tough decision that you've had to make? It's a tough decision that you've had to make as an entrepreneur that had a really good outcome and some of the lessons through that one. Yeah, again, probably a common theme in my business life is you know, it's going to start with the premise of we, I get invested and I say we, maybe you'll resonate with this, but I get invested in sunk costs. So what that means is I invested in an idea or something and I was so far down the road that I want to see it to fruition, whether it fits within the plan or not. And so quite often I'll start, start a new idea, a new initiative, and it would be actually a distraction to what we're doing. Hmm. Well, early days, or even every day, I have to fight this idea of seeing it through because I've already put time into it. So I'll give you a great example within our current, I can give you a bunch of them. I'll give you some painful ones that worked out great, like breaking up a partnership because we weren't aligned or closing a literally a seven figure business that was the wrong fit. In our current business, I fully accountable is growing and we're seeing record numbers every month. And that means we're meeting the need of that digital community. And it's awesome. Well, I decided to be the digital expert I am and go open a coaching and training arm to us to train accounting firms to do exactly what we do. And after launching it and being into it, I realized it was a massive distraction, spent over half a million dollars, curriculums, courses, all this. And my mentors and friends who I honestly was seeking some advice with said, it seems like you're running two things. And I'm like, crap, I did it again. And so we had to stop Trust Advisor because it was like running a company inside of a company with two different directions. And because of doing that, we stopped it. We're back on track to seeing record growth and fighting for the core instead of uh, chasing the dribbles of income. Well, just like you, I know that I have several of those same stories. And as you were saying that, again, my wife and I were looking at each other going, yeah, we've done that before too, you know, where you, you get into the business and you're like, let's add this other component or whatever. And it really, like you said, it distracts you from what your core focus really should be. Yeah. And it's really, if you're someone who's kind of at the front chasing things, you know, I always joke with my wife, I have the burden of being right. And it's a fun and we take, make, make fun of it. But the reality is, as you know, without leadership, people will perish. And so my job is to make the call. And so a lot of times when I'm chasing those things, you have sunk costs. You get so caught up in seeing it to fruition. You don't stop with great humility and say, whoa, maybe I've led us in the wrong direction. And so I've just learned to be thankful that sometimes you got to stop bad ideas. Yeah, the sooner you stop them in those kind of situations, the better off you end up. And I think that's something I've kind of had to learn because I tend to be one of those people that once we start it, I want to finish it, you know, but having to realize that, you know, a lot of times, what is it? Wisdom is the better part of valor. You just drop it and go back to where you were and work, focus on the, the true core part of your business. You know, um, what happens to us as entrepreneurs, we get this like feeling 
that like, you know, I can do multiple things or it will. And by the way, I even got it from my executive team, like, oh, but that still is a good idea. And what I want to leave myself with, with everybody on this uh, particular subject is the most of the disease of opportunity comes from good ideas. They're rarely bad ideas. They're just a, a good idea is a massive disruption to the core. Talk a little bit about the strategies that you use when you are facing a tough decision. How do you approach that decision and, and how do you get to a point where you're ready to move in a specific direction? I'm a verbal processor. I need to speak out loud to that inner core and second core of friendship that I trust and, and speak out loud my ideas. And over time, I've had to develop a kind of a a humility, not a false one, to be able to hear differing opinions and be able to work through it. I struggle greatly with a, a personality that is generally resistant to being told what to do. So because of that, I would always want to do things my way without hearing other people. So I've had to practice the discipline of, of seeking outside perspectives. All right, we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors when we come back. We'll talk to Vinny about some of his favorites as it relates to his life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles, such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Vinny Fisher, and we're going to go through a series of quick questions and answers that we call the trifecta. And Vinny, I want you to start us off by talking about your favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day. Uh, Zoom. I'll tell you, I love, we are a digital business, and because we, we clients are all around the United States and North America, I absolutely love teleconferencing. So Zoom is one of my favorites, and so absolutely love it. What's a favorite quote that you've heard that has helped you as an entrepreneur? Hmm. Wow. I got a bunch of, that's a great question. I would say that it actually, for me, it comes back to something in my faith. He must become greater and I must become less. And what's a favorite book that you've read that's helped you with your decision-making? Huh? I continually keep rereading one. I'm a big Bob Goff fan. So love does is probably right up near the top. I recently read a book called good strategy, bad strategy. I tend to be a fan of that one as well. And what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or dream board, Vinny? The big thing with our children is to maybe start a foundation that's going to have some mission orientation to it. On the business side, getting fully accountable from the late seven figure to eight figure stage uh, and being uh, continuing to set the gold standard in the digital space for accounting is, is, is the next piece of that as well. Well, how can the listeners reach out to you if they want to follow you more or contact you about some of your services that you provide? Yeah, so we're very accessible. You can get to fullyaccountable.com or contact us, vinnyfisher.com. Very accessible on Facebook. We have a, we kind of eat our own dog food. So we have a very accessible digital footprint. So those are probably the best ways. And you can always email me at vinny at fullyaccountable.com and uh, that'll make it to me as well. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule today to be with us on the podcast, Vinny. Look forward to continuing to follow you and, and watch you grow as an entrepreneur and look forward to having you on a future episode. Oh, thanks, Dan and I Appreciate being on today. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.